So welcome everybody. The first stronger together together of 2024. Doesn't that sound strange? <laughs> I'm still at 2004, I think, rather than 2024. But we've got a very exciting day today. Very exciting. And of course, what better way to start Strong Together series this year than with a session looking at our vision and goals for the whole of the year. Because I've been thinking about this. If you don't have a goal, how do you know where to kick the ball? Right? It's, it's like, you know, it's taken me all of these years for me to get to this point. And also where the energy goes, you know, where the attention goes, the energy flows. I love that. It's really good and it's so true. So I asked the lovely Jules Randall to join us today and I'm absolutely delighted that she is able to join us and is here she, uh, to help us identify our vision and goals and to work out what might scupper us and give us some tools and techniques to, uh, to help us achieve those uh, goals this year. Um, Jules, for those of you who don't know her, is a leadership and performance coach. And I've known Jules for about a year and a half now, which is lovely. Um, it's been really nice getting to know Jules. But rather bizarrely, we did actually, our paths crossed over 30 years ago because we both went to the same university. Not only that, we both did the same degree. We both did international business. And there weren't very many people doing that degree. But Jules um, was a couple of years, um, started a couple of years after me. So we would have been there for about a year at the same time, but we didn't come across each other. But we may well have done. So now, 30 odd years later, our paths have actually crossed, which is absolutely wonderful. And um, since leaving uni all uh, those years ago, Jules has worked in marketing and business development for really well-known uh, companies, organisations and brands, Carlsberg, Tetley and the BBC. And most recently, she was the digital marketing lead at Waitrose. So she certainly knows a thing or two about marketing and business development and leadership and performance as qualified coach as well. So absolutely delighted that Jules um, is able to join us. Now, when she's not doing all the uh, performance and leadership coaching, you can find her wa walking her dog and having a g and But I'm presuming Jules <laughs> not at the same time. <laughs> the little hip flask there. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Jules and I'm very much looking forward to the session. And do guys put um, comments, questions in the chat. Um, it is an interactive session. Um, Jules and myself will be both be monitoring the chat. Um, and um, over to you, my lovely. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to set my screen up uh, for me. Two seconds whilst I do that and enable some sound and various bits. OK, so can you see my screen? OK, lovely. Um, let me just get the chat just in case I want you to uh, talk in the chat. So great. Thank you so much, Julia, for having me today. Um, it is quite strange to think that 30 years ago, we probably were in a canteen somewhere uh, together uh, and here we are now. So uh, amazing, really. Uh, so today, um, I want to talk about how to achieve the goals that you're setting for 2024. Um, as I said in one of my posts this week, uh, this is the week that if you set New Year's resolutions, you are most likely to give up on them or downgrade them or forget you even set them. Uh, so if you started off healthy eating or dry January or whatever, this might be the week that challenges you most. So we could be talking about resolutions or we could be talking about goals for you personally or for your business. But what I'm going to talk to you guys about today is um, how you set those goals and how you can make sure you achieve them throughout 2024. So we're going to kick off with tapping in to what you really want, so what you want to achieve this year. Then we're going to understand what is possibly getting in your way, and then three proven ways to achieve your goals that I use with my clients. Does that sound good? If that sounds good, tap it into the chat for me. Thank you. So we're going to start off then um, with a little bit of an exercise. So I want you to think about if you could achieve one thing this year, what would it be? 
So it might be one thing or it might be a number of things, but try and focus on one thing that you would like to achieve. I'm just gonna pay 30 seconds of music for you to have a think about that and write it down. Hopefully that was long enough to, to find a pen that worked and to write it down. Okay, now I want you to have a think about why is that so important to you? What would it mean to you if you had achieved it? Hopefully you've got some good whys in there. If anyone is brave and wants to share, please do put any of these answers in the chat. But equally, if it's personal, you want to keep it to yourself, that's absolutely fine. And then the final thing to think about is if you've set this goal before and you haven't achieved it, or if you have concerns and doubts about achieving this goal, what do you think is stopping you from achieving this goal? Okay, I've just seen the uh, chat message from Isabel. Uh, hopefully you've got it on the screen. So the visual cues are on the screens in terms of what uh, what questions I've been asking. But essentially, what would you, um, what is the one thing that you'd like to achieve this year? Why is it important to you? And what do you think has either stopped you in the past from achieving this or might get in your way this year? And a little bit of a watch out in terms of the what might be getting in your way. A lot of people say to me, oh, I haven't got the time, I didn't have the money, or other priorities took over what I want to achieve. And as we'll come on to see, these are often good reasons we give for not achieving what we want, but often they are excuses that we allow ourselves to believe to let us off the hook from facing into doing the very things that we need to do to get the results that we want. So just bear that in mind as we go through, keep your what you'd like, why it's important and what's stopping you to hand, because you can reflect back as we go through the session. Make sense, everyone? Okay, so if you're not getting the results you want, this is probably why. And these are the three key reasons I see time and time again with my clients. So the first one is, you know what you should do, but you just don't do it. So this is a classic. So if we use health as a, a perfect example in January, we all know if we want to have a healthier body, we need to eat less and move more. And maybe we do for the first couple of weeks in January. We have a healthy diet, we go to the gym, we get up at 6 a.m., etc. But as time goes on, Maybe we see some results or we don't see some results and we stop doing the exact thing we know will get us the results that we want. And we go back to our default behavior of not eating that well or not going to the gym. The second thing is all about who we think we are and what we think is possible for us. So our self-perception or our self-image and the image we have of 
the type of person we are doesn't always align with the type of person you think is capable of achieving those goals. So we're going to look at your self-image and whether that fits. And then the third one is fear. So fear is something that always rears its ugly head whenever we try to do something different or something out of the ordinary for what we what we normally do. But what we're going to talk about today is how actually fear is not something that we want to worry about. It's something to be embraced. So we're going to flip these three things on their head. We're going to talk about how you can bridge the gap between what you know and what you do. We're going to talk about how you can understand what your current image is and how to create one that is aligned with what you'd like. And then we're going to talk about how fear is not something to be worried about. It's actually something to be embraced. And it's a brilliant sign that you are on the road to growth and, and, and to achieving your goals. So let's start off with a bit of a quote um, of what use to make heroic vows of amendment if the same old lawbreaker is to keep them. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful. And when I first heard that quote, I was like, what? But actually, what that says to me is that many of us think we need a new plan or a new strategy to achieve the goals that we set ourselves. But if the same person who is implementing the new goal is exactly the same as the person that was trying to implement the old goals, then you're not going to get the results that you want. That's why a lot of people set similar goals each year and don't achieve them, because it all comes down to our mindsets. If we continue to do what we've always done in the ways we've always done it, then we'll continue to get the same results. And so many people agree with that sentiment. So, so George Bernard Shaw said, progress is impossible without change. And those that cannot change their mind cannot change anything. So it's all about what's going on in our minds and what, what we think is possible and what's getting, that's all getting in the way of our success. Because we are essentially creatures of habit. We've got used to doing things in a certain way. And most of the time it's done on autopilot, as we'll come on to. So bottom line, if we want to improve the results that we're getting or level up to new results, we need to improve our mindsets. So it was Einstein that said the significant problems we have cannot be solved at the same level of thinking with which we created them. So have a think about that. We're not talking about new strategies necessarily today. We're not talking about new plans. We're talking about us and our mindsets aligned to the goal that we want to achieve. So to make this as simplistic as possible, this is you. This is you and this is your mind. So there are two parts to our minds, our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. So the conscious mind is what we know. It's our conscious intellectual mind. All our learning and knowledge goes in here. And then our subconscious mind is what we do. Uh, this is the emotional mind and it houses all our habitual thoughts and behavior. So the conscious mind is the one we're aware of. Um, and the subconscious one is the one we're less aware of. Now, importantly, the conscious mind is in control about 5% of the time. Studies suggest sort of two to five, but we'll just say 5% for ease today. And the subconscious mind is in control 95% of the time. So the subconscious one is the one we're less aware of. It's pre-programmed to allow us to run on autopilot throughout our day. And it operates all our habitual thoughts and behavior. And our subconscious mind is 40 times faster and a million times more powerful than our conscious mind. So think about that for a moment. The part of your mind that you're not that aware of is running the show 95% of the time. So if it's left to its own devices, it will keep doing what it's always done and keep getting us what we've always got. So if we want to cha change the outcome, we've got to change the programming. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So it largely comes down to three things. 
your beliefs, your behaviours and your self-image. And these all sit in your subconscious. Your beliefs determine what you think about a particular situation and therefore what you do or don't do. Your behaviour is dri driven by your beliefs and your subconscious programming. And your self-image dictates how you see yourself and what you think is possible for you. And remember, all these three things are sitting in your subconscious, operating you 95% of the time, and you're largely unaware. So let's talk about how we can start changing some of that. So the first one then, the knowing doing gap. Has anyone heard of the knowing doing gap before? Put a, a yes in the chat or raise your hand, just looking at a handle on that. So I hadn't until I started exploring personal development a lot more, but essentially there is often a gap between what we know and what we do. So we all know a lot, we go on training courses, um, we study, we read self-help books, and we have a lot of information, but we don't always put that information into action. Uh, so, you know, thinking about the um, exercise, we we know what we need to do and we do do it while, while we're 5% of the time consciously focused. But for the 95% of the time when we just go back to our default programming, we revert to our old behavior. Um, think about it from a new business perspective. We know that if we want to grow our business, we might need to make some more sales calls. Or we might need to go networking or we might need to do presentations or something. We know that's going to get the result we want, but we don't do it because we don't want to do it because it doesn't feel like it's us. And think about the amount of times you've been on a training course or you've learned something new. You've gone back to the office in the first instance, it's great. It's inspiring. And you're thinking, I'm going to put that into practice. As something, as soon as something kicks off, you just revert back to your ingrained behavior. So knowing is one thing and doing is another. And we need to do continuously until it becomes default behavior. So it's being done 95% of the time, not you having to focus on it for 5% of the time. So I like to think about this as a bit of an iceberg analogy. So the top part of the iceberg is the conscious mind. That's what we're conscious of, 5% in control. And then the bottom part is largely unseen and it's responsible for operating us when we're not consciously thinking. And that's 95% of the time. But why, why is that important? Well, we need to get a handle on what's going on subconsciously. And most of the time, we're not even aware of it. So if you have an objective in your conscious mind, but you have beliefs hidden in your subconscious that are at odds with what you want to achieve, then you're not going to achieve what you want. So three examples here. So say the first one is, I want to grow my business. I currently have a 50K or 100K business, and I want to scale it up to the next level. But deep down, you've got this view that you're actually not good enough to scale it to that level. Maybe you've you've done it to a certain, you know, 80K, but 100K, 200, 500, it's just not possible for someone like you. Or what you think you offer doesn't feel good enough. And so you end up procrastinating and not moving forward because you're working towards perfection. Or perhaps there's a sort of an external view that, you know, it's not possible in markets like these to grow my business. So you feel in a bit of a stagnation. Can you see where that objective conscious is in conflict with the subconscious beliefs that you may or may not be aware of? Um, likewise, a lot of people I work with have a money, uh, have money beliefs that they've grown up with. So they want to earn more money, but they grew up being told rich people are greedy. And they don't want to be feeling that they're like that or money is the root of all evil or actually I don't deserve a lot of money. You know, there's a sort of like a self image piece in there as well. You know, and we talked about um, weight uh, as well. And, uh, uh, you know, when when people are very health conscious, when they really drill down into it, they find that healthy food makes them miserable because they love good eating or they believe it's in their genes or or actually to just just feel that they they can't exercise so can you see where you know a conscious objective is in conflict 
with a subconscious belief which has been pre-programmed and is running around 95% of the time. So if you want to achieve the objective, you've got to understand what beliefs are getting in the way of you achieving that objective and then reprogram them. Because as Joe Dispenza said, the greatest habit you can ever break is the habit of being yourself. So we all have hab habitual behavior that drives the results we get in our lives. And our habitual behavior is how we operate 95% of the time. If we don't change our habits, we won't ever change our results. So if you go back to the one thing you wanted to achieve this year, have a think about that, remind yourself, what one thing could you do today to get you closer to that goal? One thing that if you actioned every day, it would make the difference. Essentially creating a new habit, a new default programming that then starts to operate 95% of the time. And the classic one, particularly with entrepreneurs, is all around the sort of sales and marketing of their business. They're very good at delivery, uh, but not very good at, at picking up the phone or uh, opening up those new conversations. And once they get that as an ongoing piece of activity, it changes the results that they're achieving. So that's the first part, all about knowing what we should do and not necessarily doing it. Uh, and we want to switch that around. So the second one is all about how we view ourselves. So who we think we are and what we think we are capable of will basically dictate the success we get in life. If what you want doesn't fit with who you think you are or what you think you are capable of, then there'll be a massive blocker in the way. So interestingly, when you look at this image, do you see yourself as the kitten wanting to be a lion? Or do you see yourself as the lion believing that you are actually the kitten? Because it works both ways. And it's so interesting when I talk about that with my clients. So who you are representing on the outside to other people, who is that? And does that match how you actually feel you are internally? So externally, I want to be a six-figure business person. But internally, I have some doubts that I am actually up for the job. So what we want to be thinking about is how do we make these congruent? So what you think is possible and who you are are aligned. So think about your self-image, which we know now sits in the subconscious as your blueprint. It's basically your programming, your rule book. It's the type of person you think you are and the type of person you think you are, you're not. So have you ever uh, heard yourself saying, I'm not the sort of person that's good at sales or I'm the sort of person that's really good at, you know, the delivery side of my business or I'm not very good at managing people or I'm much better when I'm managing people. Um, very basic, you know, are you the sort of person that always turns up on time or are you renowned for always running a little bit late? This is subconscious programming that dictates your actions and therefore your results. Because your system can only do what it's programmed to do. So the results you are getting right now will be a direct reflection of what's going on internally. So we can't outperform who we think we are, but we can change it. But if you're not getting the results that you want, then you need to look at your self image. And if you're not sure, how you see yourself, look at the results you are getting, and that will give you an indicator to what you think about yourself. And if you're still not sure, you can do a range of personality profiles to get a better understanding of how you see yourself. Now, one thing I do with my clients, which is a really good starting point, is I use DISC profiling type yes, I know DISC or no, I don't in the chat. Um, DISC is a great starter for 10 to understand who you are. 
it basically uh, at a primary level helps you understand your individual communication and behavior preferences. So on the left hand side is the sort of like high, high level output of a disk profile. So you've got um, D, which is uh, driven, determined, directive. I call them the tellers. You've got I, they're the engaging, influential, chatty, sociable people. I call them the sellers. Then you've got S, the steadier, harmony driven team players. And then you've got the C, the methodical, detailed uh, details of, of the team. But the interesting thing when I do DISC uh, with my clients is you also get these three graphs. And these three graphs help you drill down in understanding yourself a little bit better. So graph three is, is an indication of your self-perception. So that's how you view yourself internally. And then graph one is how you feel you need to act in your current role, in your current environment, or when you're trying to achieve your current objective or goal. And then graph two is your instinctive response to pressure or stress. And the interesting thing about these graphs is it helps us understand whether your internal view, so your graph three, how you perceive yourself, is in alignment with your public view, so how you think you need to be in order to achieve your goals. So if you're struggling to understand if you are aligned internally and externally, this is a great starter for 10 to work out if you are or if you're not. So in this instance, the person, the client, their perception of themselves, graph three, was one thing, and they had a very different requirement in order to, to achieve their goal. And in this instance, they really needed to dial up their eyes, their, their influencing selling element, because they'd started a new business and they had to go out and talk to people and they need to be representing themselves and their brand. And so we could use this as a way to work out how to help them do that. So it's not who you think you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. In your subconscious, it is the things that you think that are not possible for you that are often the blockers getting in the way of you achieving your big goals or leveling up to your next goal. So question for you, is who you think you are and what you think you are capable of in alignment with the goal you have set yourself this year? And if it isn't, what can you do about that? And if I would recommend spending some time just thinking through what actions you're not taking and why you're not taking them. And that will help you identify whether there's some, some sort of mismatch going on in terms of what you've set yourself and what you think is possible. So that's the second area. And then the third area, fear. So fear, fear is a good sign, but we've all been programmed to not like fear and to avoid it. And it's really interesting because there's this evolutionary, evolutionary belief installed in all of us that the known is safe and the unknown or anything that takes us away from the status quo is not. So whenever we try to do something different or out of the ordinary, fear generally swoops in and often talks us out of doing the very thing we want to achieve in the first place. And you remember I said, you know, the subconscious is very powerful. Um, it, it can be very sneaky in giving us really good reasons not to do exactly the thing we wanted to do in the first place. So what's, what's going on when fear kicks in? So we generally operate in our comfort zone. It's a nice place. We're happy here. We know and understand it. But we start the new year off and we think, oh, I'd like to do X. I like to do Y. We create a new goal. We get very optimistic. We get enthusiastic. Um, we get engaged with the idea. If it's something new and stretching, we're likely to hit some challenges or things aren't going to work out 
point the way we'd like them as quickly as we'd like them to. And that's when this little, little voice in our head starts creating all these reasons why we aren't capable or we can't do it or it's not going to happen. And often what happens then we start sort of taking, we stop taking action and it fuels more doubt and indecision. Um, and then we start talking ourselves out or downgrading our goals because we don't like the feeling that it's creating and therefore we fall back into the comfort zone. And quite often we yo-yo between these places a lot without even being aware that that's what's going on. But once we know what's going on, we have a choice. And I love this image because it shows that, you know, whilst a lot of us and, you know, you can you see it all the time, yo-yo between comfort and fear, there's a whole spectrum beyond that, which is what we as business owners, entrepreneurs, people that are wanting to uh, step up this year, have the opportunity to, to develop into. So comfort zone, yeah, stay there for a while if you like, but at the beginning of the year, you're probably setting objectives. Fear will happen when we start doing something different, something new. But if we are persistent and consistent and we remember our why, why are we doing what we want to do? And what will the benefit of doing that be? We can move forward from fear into learning, which is a great place. That's when we're sort of problem solving. That's when we're bringing other people in to help us. That's when we're acquiring new skills. And as we enter into that zone, we then move into growth. And growth is essentially what we all want to be achieving. We want to be growing. We want to be developing. We want to be expanding. And when you get into the growth zone, you're hitting your targets. You're hitting your objectives. And then you, what you're finding, you're, you're defining new goals, new objectives. And you probably sit in the comfort zone a little bit and start the whole process over again. But if you don't want to just sit in the comfort zone, that's what we have to face into. Because the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. So fear is not actually something we should be frightened by. It's an opportunity for growth and growth will give us the success that we are seeking. So think about what you want and what you think is stopping you. Was it the easy answer of time, money, priorities? Or have you started to uncover perhaps some beliefs that are getting in the way of you achieving what you want? And if you are, let's start writing out those beliefs or fears on paper, because once you get them out of your head and you critically look at them on paper, often they're not that big a deal after all. They've just sort of like become quite a big deal in your mind as you're as you're you know as you're not really facing into them and letting them sort of run the show for you. So ask yourself these three questions. Is there a gap between what you know you should do and what you are doing? Really, really good question to ask right at the beginning of the year when we're starting out with the high expectations, the huge ambitions, and you know we've we've set that objective. Critically ask yourself: Do I am I doing what I know I should be doing? Spoiler alert: None of us are. There's always things that we're avoiding. The second thing is: Is who you think you are aligned with what you want to achieve? And do you know? And often we don't. Until we have conversations like this or talk to a coach or whatever, we don't know. Um, but if we're, not, if we're not getting the results that we want, then often there is something that isn't quite aligned. And then what's one thing you can do today that will move you out of fear into learning and growth? One thing that you can do every day that sets you off on the journey to achieving the objective, the goal, the ambitions you've set for yourself this year. Type one, two or three in the chat if any of those have particularly resonated um, or maybe maybe all three. Um, I haven't been keeping a massive eye on the chat. So if you've asked me questions, sorry, I will have a look at that in a second. Um, so. As 
lovely little January special offer for you wonderful people. Um, if you are interested in understanding a bit more about your default communication behavior preferences and whether these things are aligned to your goal, I'm offering a one-off January special. Uh, you get a disc profile um, report from me and a one-to-one -one coaching session. Um, and if you're interested in that, just email me. If we get it booked in by the end of January, you get that special rate. Um, and it's particularly good if, you know, if you're not sure if you're in alignment. If, however, you're all over disc and you know what you are and it's all good, um, but you would also like to explore potentially how I might be able to help you individually or, or your team or whatever, go to my website or scan this snazzy little QR code and um, have a chat with me. So in my discovery calls, what I do with uh, my clients is talk about three areas that they can actionably take away and implement so that they can identify what their goals are, what's getting in the way and what they can do to set them on the road to success. So if you're interested, that's obviously a free call. Just just um, book in a time or, or contact me on my email. So that's that's the end of the, the goal setting uh, presentation. But um, we've still got a little bit of time. So if you're open. I would like to share a little bit of inspiration for you to get you started this year. So this is um, a visualization. Now, visualization isn't for everyone, but go with it. It's only four minutes or so. And I promise you will take something out of this visualization that you can uh, get you kickstarted uh, mid-January for the rest of this year. So if you're open, I'm going to kick off. Um, close your eyes for me, if that's okay, and take a deep breath. Now, this is time for you to switch off from the day-to-day -day concerns and spend a little bit of time thinking about your future. Any thoughts that are bubbling to the surface now, allow yourself to put them away. Imagine locking them in a box in a room, knowing that they are safe there until you are ready to access them later on today. Things on your to-do list, ideas, noises from the outside, any distraction, just pop them away for now, knowing you can come back to them later today. As you start to relax, you may, so you may notice sounds inside and outside the room you had not noticed before. And that's okay. And they are not important right now. Just let them wash over you. I'm going to invite you in just a minute to imagine that you are celebrating a landmark birthday. In full health and feeling incredibly proud of the life choices you have made. I want you to imagine now that you are celebrating your 80th birthday. Now take a few moments to notice where this wonderful celebration is taking place. You are in full health, feeling positive about the life you have lived so far. Take a few moments to notice where you are. It may be somewhere you have always wanted to go, but never been. It may be somewhere that you have always longed to go, or it may be somewhere that you already know and love. And maybe somebody organized this for you, or maybe you organized it for yourself. But just take a few moments to appreciate and notice the sights and sounds and tastes as you look around at the venue of this special event. Notice all the smells and tastes of the food and drinks that are part of the celebration and the sounds and sights of all the people that are there. Take a few moments now to notice who is there. 
the way they look, the sound of their laughter and chatter, the feel of their hugs. Maybe there are some surprises about who is there, or maybe there are no surprises at all. And maybe one of those people makes a speech about you. Listen to what they are saying about you, the adjectives they use to describe you, and the impact you have had on their life and the lives around you. The funny stories they tell about you and the anecdotes they use to describe the contribution you have made. And maybe you make a speech yourself. Or maybe you are just quietly reflecting on your life as you look over the last 80 years. As you think about what you have learned in each decade and what was important. As you think about your 70s, who and what was important? Where and how were you spending your time? The highs and the lows, what lessons you learned, what choices you made, who and what mattered, and how this was the same or different to your 60s. As you think about your 60s, who and what were important? Where and how were you spending your time? The highs and lows, what lessons you learned, what choices you took. Same or different to your 50s. As you think about your 50s, who and what was important? Where? And how were you spending your time? The highs and the lows, the lessons you learned, the choices you took. And how this was the same or different to your 40s, 30s and 20s. As you think about them, who and what was important? Where and how were you spending your time? The highs and the lows. What mattered to you then? What choices you took? Who was important? And as you reflect over all the decades and the learning and wisdom you have acquired, offer a piece of wisdom from your 80 year old self to yourself now with all the choices and decisions they are facing. One piece of advice, one piece of wisdom. And then when you are ready, take a long look around at the people and the celebration and take what you need with you as you return to the present age today on this call, feeling totally refreshed and alert. There you go. So take a minute to think about what that one piece of advice was. Maybe write it down so you don't forget it. And also, did you bring anything else back from that experience that you want to take forward with you into this year? So that's the end of my session for you all today. I haven't looked through the chat, but I will have a look through it now. And if there's any questions, please do free, feel free to ask me. Wow, Jules, thank you. Gosh, love the, I love visualizations, but I love that visualization at the end. I think it really put everything into perspective, didn't it, as to what to potentially focus on this year, this, this decade. I mean, for me personally, it's, it's health. Um, because I know that if I invest more in my health, then I'll have more energy and I'll make more of the time that I've got. And that will benefit my clients, my business and people around me. So I, I know that, you know, I'm mid 50s. I know there has to be a huge focus on that. 
Um, but just visualizing myself as 80 and, and healthy at 80, it's like, yeah, that's, that's you know, because you don't just suddenly get healthy, like, you know, in, in your 80th year, you have to invest in that. So really, really powerful. And, and for me, the, 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 the ripple effects of that, being as healthy as you can be, really just affect all areas of life. So thank you for that. And lovely to see you all. Enjoy the rest of your days. It's a lovely sunny day out there. So enjoy the sunshine in some way or another. But uh, great to see you and see you soon. Thank you very Bye. much, everyone. Cheers. Thanks, Julia. Thanks, Jules. Thank you.